Here I've got a nice problem involving ellipses. So let's first assume that B is bigger than A, and they're both positive real numbers. And then we've got these two ellipses. So we've got x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals one. So I've underlined that in pink and then drawn it in pink on this coordinate plane. So notice, since we've got x squared over a squared, that means its x-intercepts are a and minus a. Just think about setting y equal to zero. And then since y squared is over b squared, its y-intercepts are b and minus b. Again, just think about setting x equal to zero. Then we have a companion ellipse, which is x squared over b squared plus y squared over a squared equals one. And I've underlined that in green and drawn it in green right here. So in fact, this really just looks like our pink ellipse being rotated 90 degrees. And our goal is to find the common area of these two ellipses, which I've shaded in purple. So I first want to notice by the symmetry built into these two equations, the y coordinate of these intersection points is equal to plus or minus the x coordinate. So let's suppose that c is bigger than zero and that corresponds to the x coordinate of these two intersection points. Then that means this one up here is of the form c comma c. This one down here is c comma minus c. Over here we have minus c comma c and over here we have minus c comma minus c. The important thing to notice here is that the x coordinate and the y coordinate, well, they're the same up to sign. But that's actually a pretty powerful observation. That tells us that we can calculate this area by calculating only this area right here, which I'm shading in red, and then multiplying by eight. And again, that's because of the symmetry built into this picture. Not only is it invariant under rotations by 90 degrees, but it's also invariant under reflections. So that means that we can build this, build this entire blue region just by doing rotations and reflections of this red region right here. So we might as well just find the area of this red region right here, which I'll denote this as R. Okay, so let's summarize that over here. So that means our goal area is equal to eight times the area of our region, which we've just called R, but we can set up a double integral for that area. That's equal to eight. And then the double integral over R of the differential area component, and I'll put x comma y here to show that this is the differential area component in the xy plane. Next, we want to do a change of variables. And in order to get an idea of how this change of variables should go, let's expand this picture right here of just R up into this part of the board so that we can get a better idea of what's going on. So we've honed in on the region that we need to find the area of. And notice, this region only depends on one of these ellipses. And we're only able to do that because these ellipses are so related to each other. Notice if we switch X and Y, we switch this ellipse into this ellipse and we'll turn this ellipse into that ellipse. That's just one of the symmetries that's built into this. Now looking at this, we see that that's almost the area of a circle. So we might want to use something that looks like polar coordinates. But polar coordinates only work for perfect circles and we have an ellipse. So we want to hack polar coordinates a little bit to make this work. So let's see how we can do that. Maybe we'll set x over a equal to r cosine theta, and we'll set y over b equal to r sine theta. But that means that x is equal to r times a cosine theta, and that means that y is equal to r times b sine theta. We'll notice that x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared will be equal to r squared cosine squared plus r squared sine squared, but that's just r squared. So that gives us some idea that r should range from zero to one in order to draw this whole region. Now we just need to figure out what theta ranges between. We'll notice that we're trying to go to this point where x and y are the same. 
Well, that means r times a cosine theta must be equal to r times b sine theta. So that gives us this nice equation. Like I said, r a cos theta equals r b sine theta. But the lucky thing is that r will cancel out and we'll be able to solve this sine theta over cosine theta is equal to a over b. But now let's notice that sine theta over cosine theta is tangent theta. So that means we have tangent theta equals a over b. In other words, we have theta equals the inverse tangent or the arc tan of a over b. So that means we know that r must go between zero and one and then theta has to go between zero and this arctan of A over B, which we just calculated, and that will draw this entire red region. And that allows us to express this red region via a change of variables as just a rectangle in this R theta plane. But that means applying our change of variables formula for a double integral, we have this is equal to eight times the double integral over 0 comma 1 cross 0 comma arctan of a over b of, well, the differential area component along with the Jacobian. Let's recall that that is the absolute value of the determinant of dxy dr theta and then dar theta where that's happening in the r theta plane. Okay, so that gives us eight times the integral from zero to one, the integral from zero to arctan of a over b of, well, let's recall what this is. This is going to be the derivative of x with respect to r in this spot. So that's gonna be a cos theta. And then here we have the derivative of y with respect to r, that'll be b sine theta. And then in this entry right here, we'll have the derivative of x with respect to theta, that'll be minus r a sine theta, because the derivative of cosine is negative sine. And then here we'll have the derivative of y with respect to theta. So that'll be r b cos theta. And then our d a r theta becomes d theta dr in that order because of the choice that we've made on the ordering of this iterated integral. But now doing the calculation, we see that this is equal to eight times the integral from zero to one, the integral from zero to arctan of a over b. This determinant is actually pretty easy to calculate. Notice we have a r b cosine squared theta plus a r b sine squared theta. So in the end, that will be a b times r d theta dr. And now we're left with a fairly simple double integral. Integrating the theta part will give us a factor of arctangent of a over b, and integrating the r part will give us r squared over two, which we need to evaluate at one and zero. In the end, we'll have four ab times arctan of a over b. And that is our common area between these two ellipses. And that's a good place to stop.